Welcome. You've been in mm -hmm. the uh, junior mining sector for quite some time, um, quite a, a number of decades. Um, how do you go about selecting a project? Um, really, it's you want to be have the commodities right because let's face it, if the gold market is hot, everybody's going to want a gold project, right? So there's the simplicity of that to look at, or you know, right now we've got lithium's hot, we've got cobalt's hot, you know, the battery stuff. Um, so, you know, you really have to focus on that, but you, you know, probably the biggest thing is the quality of the project. Sometimes it might be in a bad market that I'll see an exceptional copper project, but nobody wants a copper project. Well, I'll acquire that, inventory it, and then wait till the cycle changes. Right, because the, every single one of those commodities is in some sort of a secular right. uh, stage. Uh, right. Rarely are they ever lined up that they're all just uh, going. We love it when they all line up. <laughs> and, and so it's important to be able to, to watch that. So when you're looking at a project, are you at times, as you pointed out with copper, going, okay, I think that this is a good deal, but I didn't see the opportunity four, five, six years down the road. Right. Well, part of it is that I, I think is any junior mining company that's successful or explorationists and stuff like that, you've got an inventory of stuff that you might not talk about because nobody wants to hear it, but you're ready that when that cycle does change. You know, so that's the key to it. I mean, if you're the ambulance chaser promoter, everybody wants lithium, you ch jump in and get some sort of an excuse for a lithium project. But isn't it usually by the time that everybody's aware of it, it's, mm -hmm. it's too late to enter into that market anyway? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, I think that looking at the lithium space, um, first of all, there's no, sh there's no shortage of spotamine, and that's the hard rock lithium. Mm -hmm. And that's just a, f a factor of pricing. You know, if the price of lithium is that high, the spot of me is profitable. Right. You know, but there's not, lithium in itself isn't rare. So why is cobalt different? Um, well, cobalt is really a byproduct. Um, I don't, I think this is my third time the world in my life that I've seen uh, the world's going to run out of cobalt. So it's, you know, for old timers, we sort of take everything with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, on that, but uh, I think cobalt, because of the batteries and the electric vehicles, I mean, we need cobalt. Don't let the guys that say that you don't need cobalt in the batteries, because those are the batteries that catch on fire, and they don't. With the ones without cobalt? Without cobalt. Oh, really? Right. And if you want to know facts about batteries catching fire, go on to Panasonic's website, the guys that build all the batteries, and see Look at their shipping instructions. And that's all in there because the, le the lawyer said to put it in there. Now these things are, even lithium batteries are not 100% safe. So taking, trying to push the envelope on less cobalt, you know, you might be going out of business as a battery maker. So what do you say to people who say, well, oh, the battery companies are going out, we don't need cobalt anymore, we're moving away from that? Um, well, I could say one thing about when I was young, uh, you know, the battery technology has been evolving ever since, you know, I'm 61, so batteries are always changing, the technology. I mean, lithium batteries 10 years ago wasn't, everybody was still using nickel cadmium, and there was still was the, the lanthanum-based ones, and now lithium has won over. So. Yes, there's always that possibility that there could be a different technology coming in. But I can't see right now with the electric vehicles, if you believe any, you know, even 50% of what everybody's predicting or whatever, there's still going to be a shortage of cobalt. So you don't see that demand going away. Now, the interesting thing, though, is that when you're looking around for a company that might have cobalt uh, as their, you know, main product, there don't seem to be any pure cobalt plays. Why is that? Well, cobalt by nature is kind of a scavenger mineral. Um, scavenger? What do you mean by scavenger well, mineral? Well, when you get a mineralized system, is usually when you get cobalt, you're getting lots of other stuff, arsenic, uranium, cadmium. Uh, so to get your cobalt in a form that can be extracted, you want it in a copper mineral or you want it in a nickel mineral. 
So it's, in other words, it's really a copper mine or it's a nickel mine with, that had, produces cobalt as a byproduct. So to get something that is really extremely high grade that, that people would uh, presume could support a cobalt only mine, <clears throat> it just doesn't exist in nature. Right. So yeah. why is the DRC then uh, so important as far as cobalt is concerned? Is it because of the, uh, the, the incredible rich copper deposits that are there? Well, basically, yes. It, if you look at the, in DRC, they basically, what, um, they're classic sediments, okay, we won't talk too much on geology, but it's in a setting that there is a lot of copper, there's a lot of lead zinc, in these deposit in that formation, they're big stable basins that have been around, and it basically mineralizes brines and fluids, and basically the metals will come out. So it is a big basin that has a lot of brine activity um, throughout that whole African copper belt. Yeah, the whole mm -hmm. African copper belt. I mean, you can find lead zinc in there, you know. So it's lumped together as a copper belt, but there's a lot of cobalt in it too. Now the thing is, is that the copper minerals also in the in the copper belt are, are extremely clean. You know, mm. you've got the the smelters all like them. There's no low iron, um, and basically the the cobalt minerals also are uh, very clean. There's no arsenic. Uh, there's no iron, and it can be readily processed in a copper smelter or a nickel smelter. So that makes production, brings production yeah. costs down. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is to produce nickel or, or produce cobalt, it's a long drawn out process. And it's usually uh, the tank slimes from big copper processing plants or nickel processing plants. So for someone to, you know, I won't name names here on, on certain companies that have hit walls on producing cobalt is it's, unless you control a cobalt refinery or have access to it at a reasonable price, you're not going to be producing cobalt. Are there alternatives to cobalt? Uh, in metallurgy, not really. I think, um, I mean, everybody's been trying to fact, you know, engineer cobalt out of batteries forever because it was, it's never been really cheap and it's never been easy to get, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I think, um, you know, would Panasonic like to not use cobalt? Yes. Because they want to save money. They want to save money, and you make, saving money means you're making money. So I don't think uh, with the battery technologies now, like we, when I say now, going forward next 10 years, I can't see cobalt, you know, lithium without cobalt, I just don't see happening. Because cobalt uh, plays a stabilizing role within that environment. Um, I don't know how much the price of cobalt really gets factored into the actual price of the battery. Mm -hmm. it's same as with the lithium price. So, you know, it's, um, I don't think the prices are really the factor. I think it's the chemistry. You know, you just right. have to use the cobalt. To, to maintain the, the integrity of the, of the right. battery. Right, well, the cobalt basically prevents it from catching on fire. I mean, lithium burns really, really good in a lab. Mm -hmm. You know, when those when lithium batteries catch on fire, it's extremely hot fire. And the cobalt prevents that from that. Cobalt, thing. yeah. We want cobalt. We want cobalt. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah.